So 53% of all countries in the world are now uh, that we monitor are in uh, macro summer, 25% in spring. That's falling as people transition to summer. Uh, those in winter, very small, 12.5%. And then in fall, it's very few. So it shows you we have the full footprint of spring. You can see it in other ways. So the US, here we go, summer. So this is when the banana zone happens. This is when we're usually in the election cycle as well when this happens. Uh, that's kind of a very typical signature of summer. Crypto goes wild. Real Vision founder and CEO Raul Pal has been talking about the banana zone, the business cycle, global liquidity, and the impact on crypto asset prices for quite some time now. According to the former Goldman Sachs executive, there is a strong, almost perfect correlation between the global liquidity cycle, US election cycles, and cryptocurrency market cycles because of the decisions central banks collectively took in the aftermath of the 2008 Great Financial Crisis. Pal believes given the precariousness of the situation, with most of the world's economies on the edge of a complete collapse, central banks collectively agreed to activate a debt jubilee, allowing them to reset their massive debt expenses to zero, then periodically come to the market's rescue by printing to avoid another near collapse. This is the first part of Pal's Everything Code thesis. Central banks will continue the periodic printing to prop up the markets for as long as they need to. Powell estimates these rescue operations come every 3.5 to 5 years and since 2008 have pretty much dictated the periodic swings in the business cycle and financial markets. When central banks print, fiat currencies get debased and asset prices rise optically, resulting in bull markets. When things get too heated, they stop printing and withdraw some of the liquidity to prevent prices from getting too high, resulting in bear markets. Then the cycle begins all over. However, while all asset prices rise against this debasement of the denominator, fiat currencies like the dollar, some assets, especially those with more secular trends, perform much better than others. No other asset class fits this description better than the cryptocurrency market, which is why it has managed to vastly outperform other asset classes and central bank balance sheets over the years. According to Pal, we are nearly upon another period of this vast outperformance, with crypto asset prices expected to perform wildly as central banks begin another round of currency debasement to prop up their economies. Pal describes this period as the banana zone, and predicts that crypto asset prices will move rapidly and wildly, taking the market from just above $2 trillion to at least $12 trillion next year. In his latest video broadcast, Pal explains that he strongly believes we are near the end of the boring zone and just about to enter the banana zone, which by all indications will be way stronger than the stunted 2021 crypto bull market. As we bring you clips from Pal's video, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. You can also check out our other videos featuring insightful analysis and predictions from some of the industry's brightest minds. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks, and enjoy the video. So where are we in markets right now? We're just in the boring zone. I posted this on Twitter. The boring zone is that post-halving transition from crypto spring to crypto summer where everything just chops around for a bit. Those of you who are over-trading, which is most of you f get chopped around. You're like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. The market's gone down and then it's gone back up. I don't want to chase this and I want to chase that. And oh my God, just stop doing that. I keep trying to explain just the don't this up thesis is to not do that. It's just that only major tokens You've got some stuff in speculative stuff. Stop trading. Just stop trading. And you can then sit there and go to Spain for three weeks and not care what the market does. Because over time, because of the adoption effects of the technology, you'll do well. So the boring zone finishes at some point, And then we transition to the banana zone, which is the full crypto summer and crypto fall. Now, those of you who get confused because you don't follow along properly and don't listen, these are not the actual seasons. These are the crypto seasons. So each year is a different season. It's not, oh, it's transitioning to fall because it's September or October. No, 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 you're not listening. Fall is 2025 at some point. And I'll come in to show you how we actually calculate this stuff in a bit because I think that's an important thing for you. 
ETF. So ETH comes out and gets slotted immediately. It was so obvious this was going to happen. Um, and that's the grayscale selling. So there's all of these people have been locked into this damn thing forever. Now have to sell. They want to get out of the trade. They've closed the gap. There's a bunch of arbitrages. So this whole thing needs to mess around for a week or two as we puke out a lot of the people from this, people reposition into the other ETFs and the sales machines of BlackRock and Fidelity and all of these guys go out and start getting the ETH narrative out there. Now, for, don't forget, it's summer. So they're kind of knocking on the door of their favorite RIA and they're all in the Hamptons or wherever they go. It's a slower time. But it will get traction. We will see a lot of volumes. Now, the other thing is a lot of you see volumes in the ETFs. Like, oh, my God, they've done 18 gazillion dollars of volume. This is the biggest thing ever. It's because they're being arbitraged. Um, well, that being used as the anchor for the arbitrage. So people are arbitraging the futures contract, which is why when you look at the holders of these ETFs, the biggest ones are like Millennium and all the hedge funds. And it's like, look, it's amazing. They're speculating in crypto. No, they're not. What they're actually doing is arbitraging the futures contract with the uh, with the ETF, which acts like spot, because they can't hold spot. There's other people, and these guys don't trade the perps markets. There's other guys arbitraging the perps against the futures, perps against the spot. So there's a lot of these players who are keeping prices together. Arbitrage play a really important role. That is most of the volume. That was most of the volume in all the grayscale trusts as well. They were arbitrages. Pal's summation, especially as a strong Ethereum bull, is that the recently approved spot Ethereum ETFs may be off to a rocky start, just like we saw with the spot Bitcoin ETFs in January, but everything should quickly change in the coming weeks, and ETH prices will take off sharply. According to reports from Bloomberg ETF analysts James Seifert and Eric Balchunas, the spot Ethereum ETFs took in $107 million in net inflows on the first day of trading, after offsetting the $484.1 million of outflows from the Grayscale Ethereum Trust. In a post announcing the first day performance on Twitter, James wrote, First full day of flows from the ETH Nest stakes are in. The Ethereum ETFs took on $107 million. BlackRock's ETH A led the way with $266.5 million, followed by Bitwise's ETH W with $204 million. Very solid first day. James's Bloomberg colleague Eric Balchunas quoted the tweet with a follow-up post that reads, The new eight, taking in $590 million on the first day, is huge, more than I guessed. The new nine in BTC race did $720 million, so ETH was 83% of that. It needed it too because the ETH E unlock was also bigger than I thought. Either way, good to start life in the green at $106 million. Of course, the first days will be rocky, especially with the grayscale bleed. But once that is resolved, the ETFs will take off sharply, as will Ethereum's price. Let's get back to Pal's video, as he talks about market cycles, global liquidity, and the banana zone. Then let's see where we are in the macro season. So the seasons I talked about, same as the crypto seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall. So 53% of all countries in the world are now uh, that we monitor are in uh, macro summer, 25% in spring, that's falling as people transition to summer. Uh, those in winter, very small, 12.5%. And then in fall, it's very few. So it shows you we have the full footprint of spring. You can see it in other ways. So the US, here we go, summer. So this is when the banana zone happens. This is when we're usually in the election cycle as well when this happens. And yes, it doesn't mean the market's going a straight line, but you tend to do pretty well. If I look at you know the Nasdaq this year, it's up thirteen percent. It's corrected somewhat. Was up about what eighteen percent, and you know by the end of the year, it's probably up thirty odd percent. Uh, that's kind of a very typical signature of summer. Crypto goes wild later in summer, so summer is the signature that is really interesting as things get interesting. The euro area also in summer. Um, China is in summer, but it has elements of fall, i.e., it is not the growth is a little bit too slow, which we know. They've been kind of flirting, kind of recessionary conditions, and that the Chinese need to do something about, which is what the stimulus is coming. 
and we're already seeing Chinese stimulus. The one everyone cares about is liquidity. So financial conditions lead liquidity. This is two weeks out of date because these things don't move a lot. Um, but as the dollar starts weakening and as interest rates start falling somewhat, this is bond yields, not Fed funds. Um, we expect financial conditions to continue to ease. Think of this as a consolidation, boring zone, sideways pattern. What we should see is the next leg higher in financial conditions. Uh, and that means liquidity should follow. Um, it almost always does. Our leads are all pointing to liquidity having to go high. If you remember, liquidity is all about refinancing the debts. We've got about 10 trillion to refinance over the next year. They're going to have to put liquidity in. They're going to have to cut rates, get bond yields down. It's all going to have to happen. Now, on a, and this is a, a, a globalized basis. This doesn't include the global injection of liquidity that's coming from China right now. They're starting to pick up. It's also not taking into account the intervention done by Japan in the currency markets, which is also liquidity. Now, when we talked about Tesla, I said, well, the ISM, the business cycle, that's what we need to ignite this. So we can see the ISM is still kind of f***ing around the 50 level. The 50 level is like, it's not really growing. Growth is like 1.5%, 2%. But, but once it starts going above 50, the rate of change of growth is going up. And that's when you're likely to see um, all of the cyclicals rallying. We're already starting to see this. This is when MAG7 have led, it might correct a little bit, but what you'll find is the other stocks, the cyclical stocks, start to play catch up and we have less dispersion amongst that. Everyone's like, oh my God, the market's going to fall apart because only a few stocks are going up. It always does that. When the economy picks up, those stocks are all driven by liquidity. These stocks are all driven by the economy. It's the economy stupid will pick up the rest of these stocks and those gaps will, will um, narrow. So new orders minus inventories says that s and uh, that the ISM will go higher, the business cycle. Uh, our five-month uh, lead indicator suggests higher. Financial conditions suggest higher. So the business cycle is going to pick up. The Fed are going to be cutting. Interest rates are likely going to be falling. The dollar is likely to be falling. And we will be in that beautiful summer period, as well as the Europeans cutting rates and the UK cutting rates and the Canadians cutting rates and liquidity injections across the board. I can't wait. So that's where all of that is. The global liquidity dominoes are beginning to fall into place to usher in the banana zone. On Wednesday, the Bank of Canada cut its key interest rate to 4.5% with expectations of further rate cuts if inflation continues to ease. Wednesday's cuts marked the central bank's second consecutive cut after last month's meeting, when it cut rates for the first time in four years. During a follow-up press conference, Governor Tiff Macklem told reporters that the decision to bring the bank's key interest rates down by 25 basis points to 4.75% during the June meeting, then to 4.5% on Wednesday, is reasonable given that inflation has continued to ease broadly in line with the central bank's forecast. With major central banks in Canada, Sweden, Switzerland, and the Eurozone cutting rates, others cannot be far behind. And when the US Federal Reserve finally joins the trend, prices will take off sharply. That's when the banana zone will begin and the crypto market will go wild. Please share your thoughts on Raul Pal's video in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.